there's a story that has haunted me for over 30 years since I read it. And it continues to haunt me. The story is told by Abraham Rabinovich. He was a reporter for the uh, Jerusalem Post. He still writes occasionally. And following the Six Day War, he wrote the Battle for Jerusalem, describing Chofchet Eo, that great, awesome day, the 28th day of Eo. And he describes how in the early hours of the morning, Israeli paratroopers broke into the city. I always imagine, I always imagine that day, and maybe even better that night, the angels in heaven were in a state of great tension. They know already that this is the day. They know that this is the day that Claudius is going to be given the great gift of them all, the gift of Yerushalayim. And then in the early hours of the morning, Israeli paratroopers make their way into the city and then they're fighting their way through the, uh, the alleyways of the old city of Yerushalayim. By about a quarter to 10, they are getting close to the Kotel, but they don't know where the Kotel is. They don't even know where Harabayat is. Today, you see the big plaza. It wasn't a plaza. There were many houses and streets and Gesalach and Sitat. And, and, and these paratroopers are 19 years old, 20 years old. No Jew had been permitted into the city for 19 years. As they're making their way through the alleyways, they see in a doorway of a house, a young man standing there, and he seems to be terrified. They assure him, they approach him and they assure him that they're not, they mean no harm, they're not going to hurt him. All they want to know is, how do they get to the Kotel and the Temple Mount? And he stands there shaking with fear, and he points the way, tells him how to go, and he remains standing there watching what's happening. And he watches Israeli paratroopers as they make their way to the Kotel, and then he sees them making their way up to Harabayat. He sees the Israeli flag going up on Harabayat. When the great news goes out, Harabayat Biyadenu, Harabayat Biyadenu. Rabinowitz writes, this young man was a New York born Jew. His name was Mark David Schleifer. He had converted to Islam and was now Mahmad Daoud Schleifer. He had married a uh, a Muslim girl and was living in the old city of Jerusalem and he was working as a reporter. For years, you should know, it was only a few months ago that for the first time I saw an article by Mahmoud Dawood Schleifer. He exists, he's real. The last sentence is the one that interests me. Rabinowitz writes, what a strange witness to one of the greatest moments in Jewish history. Mahmoud Daoud Schleifer is watching this great moment. He, does, he doesn't have a clue what's happening. He doesn't have the means of understanding how significant and how important this is in world history and in Jewish history. The meaning of this great moment, he doesn't have a clue. What a strange witness to one of the greatest moments in Jewish history. What haunts me about Mark David Schleifer? During the course of the 30 years since I read that story, I discovered, much to my dismay, you don't have to be a Mark David Schleifer not to get it. You don't have to be a Mahmoud Daoud Schleifer not to see the greatest the greatest event in, in Jewish history. You can be a shiny You can go to Daf Yomi every day.
can be a Talmud Chacham, you can be a Rish Kul, you can be a Koshiva, you can be a Chav, and not have a clue. I remember a fellow, big Talmud Chacham, once came to me that I should give a Haskama for a Sefer that he wrote. It was a very nice Sefer. My mistake was that I went ahead and read the first page. You know, the author usually writes when he's completed. When he is completed, he writes uh, something nice, you know, uh, thanks to my wife and my uh, father-in-law, for sure. For father-in-law, he's, he's always very important. And, and then I see uh, the bottom, the date. You always put the date. 28th of year. So I came back to him with the safer and I said, you finished the safer and wrote the introduction on the 28th of year. You didn't write Yom Yerushalayim? He looked at me. The big mechaber of the Sefer didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Oh! You know what he is? He's a Mark David Schleifer. He don't get it. He's living in the most historic period in Jewish history, certainly in 2,000 years, and he doesn't get what's going on all around him. It's unbelievable. He most probably walks around on Yom Yerushalayim either not knowing, and if he does know, then he will shuffle around and wait until the day is over. Chapagrim, uh, his tachnun, or who knows what. Is that a clue? Don't know. He's a Mark David Schleifer. I've met many of them. I have met many of them. I wasn't thinking of telling this story, but I'm going to tell it. You know, is that right? I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of anybody anymore, except the Chabani Shalilam, my wife. You know, <laughs> <laughs> hear me, okay. 1968. I never told this story publicly. 1968. I was uh, on the staff of Yeshivas Nerius Coil in Toronto. I was not only the staff, I was there to be the one that built the yeshiva. Uh, Shiva Rav Rudiman sent me in May of 1959. I was a buffer. And three months later, after a tremendous amount of, I opened the yeshiva. All right. Well, you know, it's not about me we're talking about Yom Yerushalayim, so we won't give you the rest of the story. Uh, all that I accomplished in uh, Toronto, aside from the yeshiva, was I met my wife there. And thank God all of the children were born in Toronto. All right. It's Chof Ches 1968. One year later. One year later. I was sitting at the uh, lunch table. Here it is. Uh, the whole staff. There was a, in the dining room, there was a whole staff table. The whole staff is there. And I said, listen, Chavra. I think we should get up now and dance with the whole yeshiva l'chvod Yom Yerushalayim. They looked at me like some kind of apparition out of Uno. Where did, where did this guy come from? Uh, 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 you know, uh, this guy gave one excuse to next one, another one. Uh, fact is that they had never thought about it. Chances that they didn't even know much about it. This is one year later. And then one of them says, Sphira. And all of a sudden, along the table, yes, yeah, Sphira. Sphira. I knew that I was defeated. But there's a Habani Shalalim in heaven. There's a God. And God saw exactly how I felt. To get Nakama, holy Nakama, for something like this, you usually have to wait.